We're renovating a bathroom? Ish? Yeah. Does it go with that? Let's find out. Yeah, that goes right there. Oh, goes right there, dude. Goes. Yeah. Oh. Always trust Eric. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Always trust Eric. Now, as I was saying, here's the situation. I am at my friend Christy's house because I'm in LA for about a month, five weeks. So we're gonna do some things at her house. We're gonna build some things. We have some off cuts from a project that I did two years ago. Yeah. So we're gonna turn those into not only floating shelves in her bathroom, but also a mirror frame. So let's do that. So here's the deal. I've got these two live edge off cuts and y'all know I've talked about this before. I've made videos on this before. This is kind of my favorite one day easy project. I always save the off cuts from slabs to turn into floating shelves. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. The first thing I need to do is flatten both of these. As you can see, they're a bit grayed from being in the sun for two years. This is LA, gets a lot of sun, doesn't get a lot of rain. They've been outside that entire time. And so we're gonna run them through the thickness here to clean up both surfaces. They're still reasonably flat. If I had a jointer, we would use it. We don't have one, so we're not gonna use it. So we're gonna get it flat enough to be a shelf, and then we're gonna clean up these live edges, just picking the bark off and sanding them down. And then we are going to stabilize them with epoxy. Now this is important. Because if you listen, that's pretty solid. You hear that like rattling? This thing is hollow. So if we don't stabilize this, it runs the risk of actually breaking when you install it on the wall. So we're just gonna take some tabletop because we don't have anything like a penetrating epoxy. We'll get a little epoxy on this and we'll let it set overnight. And then tomorrow we can come in and start playing around with it more. Cue music. This is an excellent moment to ask the question, how good is good enough, right? How sharp is sharp enough? How flat is flat enough in this particular instance? Woodworkers will, to the day we stop existing on this planet, fret and worry about how flat is flat enough. In this particular case, remember, we are doing backyard woodworking. We are quite literally in a backyard. I've got a fire, I've got a joiner. I don't have a full fleet of tools. We are limited in what we're doing, but what we are doing is carpentry. It is to some extent fine woodworking, but on a smaller scale. So making sure that something is flat enough so that when I put something on here, it doesn't fall or roll. And if I sight down this, nobody's going to walk into the bathroom, see this and go, oh my God, that thing is not anywhere near flat. If it fits under those two circumstances, that does, that's not a way to say that. I don't know words. If both of those things are true about this piece of wood, then it's flat enough. Now I need to sand the bloody thing. So it's been a couple of days. Everything is nice and cured and hard. And what I need to do now is sand these pieces down to remove as much of the epoxy on the surface as possible. I'm not using the epoxy as a finish. I'm using the epoxy as a stabilizer 
We're gonna get this sanded and then we're gonna get these scribed to the wall. And then it's time to put some brackets in there, maybe locate the bottom one. We're gonna find out, let's get busy. Here's where we're at at the moment. I've got both pieces cut. I've got the rabbit for the mirror relieved and I've got the holes drilled for the brackets as well as the mortises in which they're going to sit. So all is well, all is right with the world. What we need to do now is actually put these up on the wall in the exact location where these need to be. I have measurements. I need to be very exacting with those measurements in order to have this line up properly because there is no wiggle room left or right, north or south. So let's head down to the bathroom and get busy. And yeah, I freehand routed these. There's, listen, it's pretty good. I'm not losing any sleep over that. Those are really just a relief to make sure that the bracket seats all the way down in the back of the shelf goes up to the wall. They're not super structurally important. So freehand routed, get the job done quicker. Looking good, right? Yeah! Pretty slick, everything's nice, tight fit. Gotta take it down and put a coat of finish on the shelves. Yeah, but it still looks really, really good. Yeah. This, so this wall, this wall, man. This, <laughs> this wall, wall. <laughs> has a curve in this direction and a curve in this direction. Oh yeah, I see it right there. Right, right. So that means that there's a hollow behind here. I'm not gonna worry about that. That was not me, by the way. I hired someone I to do that. Her. <laughs> so. <laughs> Now, the last thing I have to do to this is get a little finish on these pieces. Now, a couple of brief notes regarding finish. Firstly, I'm not at home, so I don't have my normal finish, nor do I think I would use it for an application like this because it's too labor intensive. So in this case, all things considered, regular old fashioned Danish oil is gonna be the easiest thing to do. I could spray it with a lacquer, I don't have anywhere to spray, nor do I want to wait for spray to cure. This is going to be a very nice, quick application. I can wipe it on, wipe it off, and I can probably get these up on the wall within an hour. Now, secondly, you may be saying, what the, how the hell are you going to get multiple coats of finish on within an hour? I'm not going to do multiple coats of finish. Normally, yes, three or so coats of finish would be ideal. But remember, I've already sealed these with epoxy. So even if I put multiple coats of oil on, that's probably not going to absorb into the piece the way a normal coat of oil would. And lastly, 
These are shelves. Again, this is backyard woodworking. This is not fine furniture. So one coat, maybe two coats if you're feeling frisky is gonna be enough. If you really wanna make them waterproof, you absolutely can. You can use another epoxy or another top coat, whether it's a urethane or say like a, a varnish like Halcyon from Total Boat. Those are all perfectly reasonable applications. In this case, quick, dirty, Danish oil is gonna get the job done. While those are drying, a couple of quick words. Yes, I'm in LA. Yes, I'll be out here for a few weeks because I am taking on a new project that I am not contractually allowed to tell you about yet. And it should be a tremendous amount of fun when I do have the opportunity to share that with you. But for now, I'm gonna have to focus on that. And this is the thing I didn't see coming when I made the decision to make 52 videos in 2023. So what that means is I may have to adjust my plans. I think it's necessary for me while I'm here working on this project to be able to focus my creative energies primarily on that. And I will still make videos as I can, but I don't think I can do that every week. I don't think it would be fair to this project, and I don't think it would be fair to you guys to put out what I feel would be probably subpar videos. So I'm out here for another month. I will put out at least one more video. You have my word on that. We'll see how many I get to. So bear with me. I appreciate your patience and your constant and unwavering support as always. And now, I think it's time to get these shelves up on the wall. So friends, that's that. It's a very simple little project and proof yet again that you don't need all the expensive equipment to start making things out of wood. Literally all I used is a chop saw, a probably $50 Ryobi router, a palm sander, and of course the planer, which I didn't have to plane it, it just made life a lot easier to do so. I could have done that with the palm sander or the random orbit sander if that's all I had available to me. So. You don't need to go spend a whole bunch of money. You don't need to work to extreme accuracy for something that's nothing more than a carpentry project. Yet again, we are not building the Eiffel Tower. We're simply making things out of wood. In this case, a little asymmetrical mirror frame. I think it's a cool way to fill the space. I think she'll be able to decorate that. We're gonna put some shelves below next to the sink as well in the future. But for now, I gotta go get this video edited so I can get it out to you guys this week. So I hope you found this project entertaining, educational, encouraging in some way. I'll continue to make things at the pace that I can. So for now, go get in the shop, go make a thing, and try to enjoy the process. And friends, until next time I see you. Cheers.